کنفرانس در مقر پارلمان اروپا در لندن فراخان به اتحادیه اروپا ملل متحد و آمریکا برای عمل به تعهداتشان در حفاظت از اشرفی ها و تضمین امنیت لیبرتی استرون استیونسون رئیس هیئت رابطه با عراق در پارلمان اروپا مارینا یاناکوداکیس نماینده پارلمان اروپا از انگلستان مایک فریر نماینده پارلمان انگلستان Last month Baroness Ashton the high representative for foreign affairs went to Tehran against all of our advice She went there setting foot on Iranian soil on the 8th of March which ironically was International Women's Day uh, Four days earlier the mullahs had hanged a 25-year-old girl who'd been in jail since the age of 15 and she left behind the daughter when she was hanged they have in prison just now a 26 year old girl who's been in jail for the past seven years and is about to be hanged for resisting being raped by the thugs from the Basiji I wonder when uh, Baroness Ashton sat down with the so-called moderate President Rouhani the smiling face of the moderate progressive Iran if she raised these questions if she raised the fact that the Mullah Supreme Court has ordered a man to be blinded and have his nose and ears cut off I wonder if she raised the fact that since Rouhani was elected last August 700 people have been executed many of them hanged in public you know Iran's record on women's rights is globally renowned Mrs. Rajavi's own sister and her husband when her sister was pregnant were executed were shot this is the real Mullah's regime and this is the real smiling moderate Rouhani and you know on the day she arrived the Israelis stopped a vessel they intercepted a vessel carrying uh, ground-to-ground -ground rockets, missiles, thousands of uh, bullets and uh, armaments heading for the uh, terrorists linked to the Iranian regime in Gaza. So her visit almost fell apart as soon as she arrived at the airport. It's a farce. They are the biggest exporters of terror in the world, the Mullah's regime. They are now uh, exporting arms to their puppet Nouri al-Maliki in Iraq and he is using Iranian weapons to wage genocidal war on the Sunni population in Al-Anbar province. He's reducing the cities of Fallujah and Ramadi to rubble as we sit here. And the Americans are supplying weapons to allow Maliki to kill his own people. Two weeks ago, he flattened the hospital in Fallujah, killing dozens of nurses, doctors, and patients. And he tells the world, I'm waging a war against terror, against terrorists, and the Americans pile in the weapons. They sell the weapons, so the Americans are making some money out of this grisly uh, trade. But this is the Iranian regime providing weapons to Maliki, Maliki allowing a free passage for arms and personnel to go through uh, Iraq to bolster the brutal regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria. And what's the West doing about it? We seem to have uh, refocused our attention. I think there is a general embarrassment where people say we should never have been involved in the war in Iraq in the first place. It was an illegal war. We were tricked by Tony Blair and George W. Bush and after they both announced mission accomplished as soon as the troops left Iraq we've washed our hands of the whole bloody affair and our focus is now on Syria where Western UN EU US policy is a disaster and on Crimea 
where at this very moment there is a massive Russian military buildup on the border of uh, eastern Ukraine and we could be staring at a new invasion of a sovereign uh, country that wants to join the EU. So I have a message for the leaders of uh, these three great uh, peacemaking institutions, the EU with Baroness Ashton, Ban Ki-moon at the UN, and John Kerry and his boss Barack Obama in the US. You have failed miserably in dealing with the crisis in Syria. You've failed to stop Vladimir Putin's uh, move into Crimea and potential move now into the rest of uh, eastern Ukraine. You have washed your hands of the disaster that is now Iraq, rapidly heading towards civil war and becoming day by day a failed state. You have abandoned the 3,000 people in Camp Liberty to their fate having collectively, the EU, the US and the UN, put pressure on us and on me personally to persuade Mrs. Rajavi and the people in Camp Ashraf that they had to move to Camp Liberty so that they would be quickly registered as refugees and in what I was told would be a revolving door quickly taken out of Iraq to a country of safety. Here we are two years later. 300 of the original 3,300, 10% have actually left Camp Liberty and because of our efforts, not a single one has left because of a finger being raised by the UN, the US or the EU. We get all of these envoys, we get the horrendous intervention of Martin Kobler, thankfully now sent to the Congo and I hope he doesn't return from there in a hurry. <laughs> who did his utmost to undermine all of the efforts we were making to rescue the people in Camp Liberty. And yet here we are two years later, 3,000 people held in prison-like conditions. I spoke to the daughter of a lady who was in Camp Liberty on Wednesday and came to our uh, Friends of a Free Iran event. And she said that her mother has an eye infection like dozens of other people in Camp Liberty because of the contaminated water supply. And they are denied access to medicines. She said her mother is told that you have an appointment with the doctor in Baghdad. You have to be at the gate of Camp Liberty at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And at 9 in the morning, her mother, who is uh, almost crippled and finds it difficult to walk on the gravel, there are no proper boardwalks in the camp, finds it difficult to get to the gate and then is told to stand in the heat and the sunshine for hours because the camp guards deny her uh, the right to leave to go and see her doctor. And then finally she gets a call to say, I'm afraid your doctor's appointment is over now, you've missed it. And she has to walk back into the camp. And this is the kind of psychological torture going on day after day they deny uh, access to foodstuffs on some occasions, to proper clean water. The sewage system is contaminated and breaking down and flooding the camp regularly. And these people are not allowed to have their own hard hats and armored vests, thousands of which are lying back in Camp Ashraf. We have had, after the repeated attacks, on these people who are sitting ducks because the 17 and a half thousand concrete T walls were removed before they were allowed to enter the camp and after repeated protests from us a few hundred T walls have been put back but the vast majority of the T walls were sitting outside the wall of the camp but recently were taken away altogether in order that any uh, UN or UNHCR people couldn't uh, witness them, uh, take photographs of them and demand their erection inside the camp. So they are sitting ducks. 112 of them have been killed, murdered, 
in repeated attacks and massacres. The massacre of 52 uh, of the residents of Camp Ashraf last year, handcuffed and executed, even the wounded executed on the hospital trolleys in the clinic in Camp Ashraf. And what did the West do? Ashton demanded that Nouri al-Maliki should have a full uh, investigation and hold to account those that he discovered were responsible. That's like asking King Herod to take charge of the nursery. That's ludicrous. Since the very first massacre in Camp Ashraf, after the Americans reneged on their deal to provide safety and security for every individual and walked away from that agreement, walked away from that pledge, since that very first massacre, we have not had a single inquiry by Maliki into any of the murders. Not a single thing has been done. Because he is the perpetrator of these crimes. And he should be held to account, ladies and gentlemen. He and Rouhani and Khamenei should be brought before the International Court of Justice and made to stand trial for the crimes against humanity. So my message really to the EU, the UN and the US is after all these collective global failures, wouldn't it be nice to have a little success? At the stroke of a pen, you could get all 3,000 people out of Camp Liberty today. Whether my plea will be listened to is another question. But it's because we have brave people like you the courageous people who have backed the PMI for years in many cases. It's because we have these 3,000 people on the front line of the opposition to the Mullah's corrupt and brutal regime in Iran that we know that there is a dawn coming after the blackness of the night that we have suffered, that the Iranian people have suffered for so long. The courageous people of Camp Liberty and the courage and fortitude and dynamic energy of Mrs. Mariam Rajavi will prevail. Fascism and the kind of cruel dictatorships that we now see in both Iran and Iraq can never prevail. The good will win and I want to join with Mrs. Rajavi and all of you in the day we walk into Tehran and declare uh, freedom, justice, democracy. And I want to say to all of you at the end of uh, this presentation, I am Ashrafi. Uh, my name is Marina Yanakadakis. I am a London MEP um, with the Conservative Party. Um, as a London MEP, I represent 8 million people. So I think we need, we, there's much work for us to do to, to say what's going on and the injustices. I first became interested from hearing about the camp in uh, Brussels from my good friend Stuart Stevenson, who's an MP for Scotland. But that's how I got involved from Stuart. And as I found out the atrocities that happened in Camp Ashraf, it saddened me. Um, as you all know, there have been three attacks on the camp, July 2009, April 2011, and the latest one, which was a crazy attack in 2013, in September, when you didn't really have many people there to attack. It just shows the injustice has no logic in it. Not that the whole thing has any logic. For whatever reason, that they were there, and they had made it their home. And as we know, there were at some stage 3,000 people. They weren't doing anything to anyone. And then suddenly they decided to break up the camp, and they were going to split people up and split up families. But these people took it with dignity. And I think that's important to remember. These people are very dignified. All through everything they have suffered, I have seen great dignity. Um, and they took it with dignity and they accepted they were going to go to Camp Liberty, which was not perfect by any means. It was going to be a holding camp for 200 people. And what do we know further down the line? They've moved everyone there and they're living in squalor and difficult conditions. And that's not, it's not human what we're doing. So we need to bring that up. Um, 
But what shocked me even more was the latest attack on September the 1st, when you had people who were left in Camp Ashraf to look after the camp and to sell off the last things they had. And the people who were there, who were under UN protection, were attacked on the 1st of September. And these people, as we know, 52 people died, which is totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And then they took the hostages as well. And out of the hostages, we have, I believe, um, it's seven women or six, six, six women and on one man. Um, again, as a, as a woman's rights activist, I, I have great concerns on what is happening to these hostages. Um, and I wrote a letter to um, Cathy Ashton. So really, that's where I stand. Um, I will continue to support you as long as I am an MEP, and I hope I will continue to support you in the next mandate. That is my, my, my job. It is one of my um, areas that I very, feel very strongly on. But we, we, need to, we need to get more supporters. We need to continue this fight. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is, if I can be quite straightforward, is that for everyone in this room, you have one issue, which is dealing with uh, Camp Liberty or Camp Ashraf and the refugees. Unfortunately, it is part of a very complex issue that the Foreign Office is trying to deal with uh, with regards to Iran. The Iranian situation, both in terms of the nuclear program, trying to constrain their ambitions, trying to uh, curtail the state sponsorship of terrorism, either through Hezbollah, Hamas, or in the Syrian civil war, is a very complex issue. So the Foreign Office is at the same time as trying to get the Iraqi government to deal with the issue of Camp Liberty, um, within the general security issues within Iraq and so on. So for us, it's a big issue. Um, it hasn't been forgotten. It is on their agenda. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.